Hey there homemakers! I'm back today to make a video that I actually over the past 48 hours did not think I was going to make but I woke up this morning with a very clear feeling that um, I needed to get some thoughts out and I needed to say some things even if um, even if only five people see this video. Um, I feel like I need to throw um, my hat into the ring as far as support uh, for a family that I think could use it right now. So uh, I'm sure everyone has seen the firestorm that is going on around Harrison Butker and his family. And as someone who lives the same traditional life that uh, Harrison was expounding on, um, this has been an interesting couple of days for myself and my husband. Um, so I'll start off with kind of how I viewed the situation. So I've been in social media for, I mean, years now in different capacities, but specifically as a homemaker, I've been in this sphere for the last few years. I understand that there's people with a lot of vitriol for how I live my life out there on the internet. And they've made it very clear to me that they exist. Anytime I have a video go even like semi-viral over on TikTok, these people come out of the woodwork and wowie do they make themselves known. Um, also, uh, in the past couple of days when I've commented on other people's posts in support of Butker and his family, um, people have been so rude, beyond rude, uh, in reply comments to me, which I expect that to happen. I'm not losing sleep over it, uh, but it did come as a little bit of a shock to me that outside of these social media platforms that um, we're seeing a larger firestorm about this. And it was also a huge shock to my husband. Now my husband, um, first of all, love of my life, best man, hands down, I've ever known. Um, my respect and admiration for my husband is just, it's beyond anything that I could put into a video. Uh, so when he gets upset about something, um, he's not a man who gets upset very easily. When he gets upset about something, um, it's like a stake in the heart for me because I don't, I don't ever want him to be, um, upset. It's my job to, um, guard his heart and guard his peace. And I take that very seriously. So yesterday when he deleted all of his social media apps, um, he does not post on social media a lot, but he does like, you know, do the doom scrolling like all of us do, right? Looking at funny videos and things like that. Um, he erased all of his social media yesterday because of the vitriol that has been sent towards this man and his family. Um, because he was just amazed and surprised on a new level um, that the way that they were speaking about Harrison Butker and his family is the same way that people would view our family because we have the same values. Everything that he said in that speech is something that my husband and I would uh, absolutely agree with and it's how we live our life. And for him to see that level of hatred for our family, right? Um, and the families that we know, like we, we're very blessed that we live in a community that is in a lot of ways insulated from this kind of um, cultural, whatever this is, movement. Um, we live in a community where homemakers are actually fairly common. I'd say, I mean, I think all of our friend group um, the mothers stay at home or at some point um, during their children's lives have stayed at home for a significant amount of time. Uh, I really can't think of any any woman that I know that that I'm close with that works full time. So um, also my husband is blue collar. Um, uh, most of the people he knows are also blue collar. Like we, we, we are very blessed. I, I just I can't reiterate that enough. We are very blessed 
to live in the community that we live in and that we and um, and especially our children too are very insulated from the wider um, cultural opinions about our family structure. So for my husband, it was a shock to see all of this hatred again because the things that he said, that's how we live our lives. He's a public figure, so of course he's going to get the backlash for it, but it was made very clear to us this week that um, people hate <laughs> traditional families. Um, there's a huge amount of hatred for a man who is a patriarch of his family. There's a huge amount of hatred for a woman who loves being a homemaker. So I had three points that I really wanted to hit on here. The first two are very quick. Um, one is context. I think apparently nobody understands context anymore um, because the context in which Harrison made his remarks seems to be lost on the wider world. So here's the context, you guys, for anybody who missed it. He is a traditional Catholic man who has never hidden that fact. So a traditional Catholic man speaking at a traditional Catholic college um, to a Catholic audience, okay, saying Catholic things. That's the context of which this speech was made in. Catholic man in a Catholic university speaking to Catholic people about Catholic things. The man got a standing ovation, okay? He had people clapping like in the middle of his speech, like specifically after that part where he said that the greatest thing his wife um, has done in her life, according to his wife, um, is being a homemaker. They interrupted his speech with applause, okay? I've noticed a lot of clips uh, are cutting off that applause uh, that was given in the middle of his speech when they show that, that particular small clip. Um, make of that what you will. So that's the context in which these remarks were made by Butker. Um, that apparently is lost on the world. I do think that this is a bellwether of where things are headed. Uh, being an openly traditional Catholic Christian person uh, is being made very clear that we are not welcome in the public sphere. So I think that people need to take note of that and um, prepare your hearts, prepare your minds, and prepare your, uh, your children as you're getting ready to um, send them out into the world, be it, you know, 10 years from now um, or two years from now depending on the age of your children. So I think we need to be very aware that that has been made clear with this incident. Um, number two, uh, people are telling on themselves. Nobody watches the primary sources anymore. People are telling on themselves in this instance, like in this thing with Bucker, more than I've seen in quite a while. Um, it is very very apparent from the vast majority of comments that I've seen on social media that the majority of people did not actually sit down and watch his whole speech. You know how I know that? Because the parts that they're mad about were like less than five minutes total of his speech. The vast majority of his speech was spent on um, talking about how our priests and our bishops have failed us, which I, I agree with. Um, nobody seems to be getting mad about that part. Um, so people seem to think that he walked up on stage and talked about how women need to just stay in the kitchen to make sandwiches and that that was his 20 minute speech, uh, which is just mind boggling to me that people are willing to admit their ignorance so very clearly for everyone to see on the internet. But, um, but that's where we are. So if you are in discussion with people about this speech and about what was said before you get into some internet war with somebody in the comment section of something, uh, just ask them if they've watched the speech and ask them roughly how much time was spent talking about uh, the church hierarchy, right? Just, um, just throw that question out at them because I found that <laughs> nobody can answer it. Um, so, the third point that I want to make, and this is the, the, this is the larger point that I want to make, is that I, I think it's been made very, very clear 
from the vitriol given to this speech. Um, it's very clear that the world does not understand what Catholics mean when they say vocation. And honestly, <laughs> I think it's becoming clear that a lot of Catholics also do not understand what vocation means in a Catholic context. So my disclaimer that I am not a theologian, um, but I have read a lot. I do listen to much wiser voices than mine. Uh, and I do take my vocation very seriously. So here is my two cents on Catholic vocations and what that means. I'm gonna take a sip of my coffee before we do that. This, by the way, is not going to be a very highly edited video because I don't have time to do that this morning. So when a Catholic is talking about a vocation, we are not talking about a job. We are not talking about anything that has to do with a paycheck. And I think that that is the first thing that needs to be made very clear. So the people that he was speaking to, this is a college graduation, right? They've gone to go get their, um, their degree. A lot of them are probably going to use it in a career that is a career that is not a vocation so when harrison was speaking about their vocation he was not speaking about a career and the catholics that he was speaking to know that okay so when he's talking to the men about being a husband and a father and being present and being spiritual leaders and when he's talking to the women about being wives and mothers and that that is the highest calling that they have if their vocation ends up being married life catholics do or should understand what he means by that because our vocation again is not a paycheck our vocation is the thing that god has called us to that is going to help bring us to salvation and interestingly, it always has to do with marriage. So it's either going to have to do with a heavenly spiritual marriage, or it's going to have to do with an earthly human marriage. So for folks that don't know, um, a priest, when he becomes a priest, is in a spiritual sense, marrying his bride, the church, because he's standing in persona Christi. Um, and what is the church? The church is the bride of Christ, right? And our priests are trying to be, you know, and I mean, they're humans, they fail, right? But their job is to be um, like Christ for us to be shepherds. So in a very spiritual and, and um, real sense, they marry the church. So that's marriage, okay? Uh, when a woman becomes a nun or a sister, okay, um, they are marrying Christ in a very real spiritual sense. That is a marriage, okay? Some orders, I don't know if all of them do this, but I know that some orders actually, like the nuns will wear uh, a wedding band to remind themselves of this promise that they've made to Christ. So that is a marriage. And then, of course, we have the vocation of marriage in an earthly sense. So you are marrying someone and in that vocation, your job is to help your spouse to live rightly, to grow in their relationship with Christ and to reach salvation, to reach heaven. Uh, and the same thing with your children. Okay. So when you marry, you're making the promise that you are going to bring children into the world and that you're going to raise those children in the kingdom of God and bringing them towards salvation. That is my job as a wife and a mother. And I take it very seriously. Now I do not work outside the home. Um, now I, I will be completely honest here. It may be that um, next year I end up doing some sort of work uh, at my kid's school actually, um, just because <laughs> inflation stinks. Um, but even if I end up doing that, that's not my vocation. And that cannot get in the way of my actual vocation of being a wife and a mother. 
um, all this past year, I have been uh, volunteering at my children's school. Um, I have not let that get in the way of my vocation as wife and mother. And I've chosen that anything that I have done outside the home as far as volunteering um, or anything in the community, those things are building up the culture and the community that I'm raising my children in and that I have my family in. So it's feeding back into this domestic church that my husband and I are in charge of. Okay. So that is what vocation means. And, and I'm, I shouldn't be surprised that the world does not understand that. Um, especially when you have things like VOTEC, like a vocational school, right? Um, so we've started to use that word in different contexts um, in the wider secular world. So I shouldn't be surprised that there's that much confusion about it. But I do think that if people are going to comment on, again, a Catholic person speaking about Catholic things, they should maybe try to understand Catholic theology around this subject in a, at least a small degree. So that's what I'm trying to convey here, um, is that that is the theological truth that Harrison Butker was hitting on. He was not saying that a woman's place is barefoot and pregnant and making him sandwiches. It absolutely has disgusted me the way that I've seen people speaking about his wife. People that supposedly are feminists and are looking out for her and want to make sure she's okay. First of all, who's, who the heck are you um, to comment on someone else's marriage? But even apart from that, um, I've seen people posting uh, pictures of Isabella uh, Butker. Isabella or Isabella. I'm sorry if I'm getting that wrong. My morning brain is not remembering which one it is. I'm very sorry. Um, I've seen people posting pictures of her in a full burqa. Obviously it's not her. She doesn't wear one of those, but people saying, Oh, this is Harrison's wife. Ha 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 ha. Not appropriate on any planet at any time ever. Is it appropriate to take the speech of a husband and father who was so choked up talking about his wife that he had to stop. It was very clear he was about to cry. Just thinking about how much he loves his wife and how much he appreciates what she does. The man was getting choked up at love for his wife. And then people are taking that and twisting it and turning it into something ugly It is, um, it's eye-opening for me on a different level, I think, because um, my husband, um, you know, he doesn't work with all Catholics, right? Um, my husband is an electrician, so he works with a variety of different people. Um, now, he does blessedly work with a lot of um, Catholic men, Christian men, um, really awesome people. Again, like I said, we live in a really awesome place, but... Um, he has worked with people who think that he's nuts, that he lets me stay home um, and doesn't understand um, how our family structure works at all. So he has um, in the past gotten pushback from men about um, the way that we live our life. But that pushback has been kind of smaller and quiet. And again, maybe my husband also like protects me from things that have been said to him. I don't know. Um, but the idea that people could be looking at my life and thinking that about me is um, shocking. And again, it probably shouldn't be shocking at this point, but it is because I can't imagine that anybody would look at my marriage, my family, my home life, and how happy and fulfilled I am, and then um, make jokes that I should blink twice if I need help. Which, by the way, that joke has been made to me online. I say joke. I'm sorry. I don't find it funny. Um, I'm sure the people who type that out think that they're very clever and funny. I don't find it funny. 
but um, that has been said to me more than once. So again, probably shouldn't be shocked, but the, the, the amount of vitriol that has been thrown at this man and his family and his wife um, just is, it's a sign of the times. I guess I'll just say that. Um, so Harrison and, um, and your beautiful family, if you happen to see this video, probably very unlikely, but if you happen to see this video, please know that you have people praying for you. Um, please don't feel like you need to be quiet. Please do not let this scare you out of, um, being clear about what you believe. I think that we need more good men to stand up and to say these things. And not everyone has a platform um, like you do. Um, God has given you a very special place. And I hope that you continue to use your voice to stand up for the little families like mine. Because that's what I heard. I'm gonna get choked up. That's what I heard when I listened to your speech. I heard you standing up for families like mine who in today's world are pretty invisible and apparently pretty hated. Um, so thank you. And to everyone else out there who will see this, um, I hope that I've given you a little bit of context to, um, number one, what the speech was about and who it was to, but also um, just a little glimpse into what Catholics mean when we talk about vocation. And um, that even if, even if you are in a situation um, financially where both spouses have to work because Lord knows it's hard out there right now. Even if you are in that situation, um, make sure that you're putting your vocation first. Your vocation has nothing to do with that paycheck. Your vocation as a husband and a father or as a wife and a mother have to come first. And when they come first, everything else falls into place. And it's a really beautiful thing. Um, so with that, I'm going to sign off. I have a full day ahead of me. I'm doing this at like seven o'clock in the morning. Um, cause like I said, I woke up and just felt, you know, I probably shouldn't be quiet about this. Um, given that I've made it very clear, I'm a homemaker and that I enjoy it very much. So, um, with that, I will sign off. Happy homemaking as always. And I will see you next time.